What is going on, everybody, and welcome to the Yankees on Deck podcast. I'm your host, Matt Cunningham, and what a win tonight, guys. The Yankees beat the Miami Marlins 7 to nothing to continue to a hot start on this homestand and the season. The highlights, Juan Soto hits his first Yankee Stadium home run, and it's how you pictured it, right? A deep fly ball into the short porch, baby. I mean, that's how... We pictured it. That's how it was. He was great tonight. And, oh, yeah, that kid, Anthony Volpe, 22 years old, he continues his hot streak to the start of the season, hitting over 400, and he hit a three-run homer in the same inning as Juan Soto did. Yankees put on six runs early against Marlins ace Jesus Lazardo and Nestor Cortez, who needed to give us a deep game tonight, give this bullpen a rest. He was able to do that. Eight shutout innings, only two hits allowed, and couldn't have pictured up any better game than you had tonight. Yankees shut out the Marlins seven to nothing to begin the first game of this three game set in New York to wrap up this homestand. I mean, guys, like this game, we were asking for a relaxing game, and we got it tonight. Uh, the Marlins, they're not a good team. So this isn't anything by any stretch like we should be thinking we beat, you know, Houston again or something. You know, the Marlins, they're awful. They're now 1-10. in I mean, but the Yankees, they did what they had to do tonight. The offense came out. And look, Jesus Lozardo, he's a good pitcher. I mean, last year his stats were great. And to start this game, he wasn't doing too shabby. I mean, he, you know, the first few innings he was – those first three innings, actually, he was pretty locked in. You know, his pitches, he was moving the ball, high fastball up in the zone. He was getting a couple guys, and he looked he looked sharp. He looked he looked pretty crisp those first three innings. And then the Yankees, you know how they do, though. They work the bats. They work the count. They were getting his pitch count up. Juan Soto, he gets a big leadoff double, you know, and then it just kind of unravels from there a little bit for – Jesus Lazardo, you know, after he gave up that first hit. And, you know, what else can you say? This team has grinded at bats, at bat after at bat. And they don't always get going right away. But after a few innings, you see them working the count, working these pitchers, getting them fatigued a bit earlier than you would expect, especially when you compare this team to last year. And then they get to work. I mean, and we saw it tonight, you know, then we had first and third. In the fourth inning, Anthony Volpe comes up. And all I'm asking at this point is Anthony Volpe, just get a sack fly, get a ball in the air, uh, driving a run. Don't don't try and do too much. You know, and Anthony Volpe, you know, he falls behind in the count, 0 2. He works the count, and then he gets a pitch he can handle down and in, ropes it to left field, three run home run. And just like that, you, you know, what you've been feeling to start the year with this team, you continue to feel. And then Juan Soto, he comes up later that inning and hits a three-run homer himself into the short porch, keeps it just fair down the line. I thought it was going to go foul for a second, but it stayed fair. And his Yankee moment has begun in that stadium. The crowd goes crazy. I mean, you couldn't have pictured an any better night than you had tonight with this team in this game. Yes, the Marlins stink, but Jesus Lazardo, I mean, he's a guy who has been talked about in trade conversations with the New York Yankees and a lot of teams this past winter uh, just because of his age. He's 26. We talked about him a little bit yesterday. Hasn't had a good start to the season, obviously. But last year, he was really the workhorse for this Miami Marlins pitching staff. And so he, I mean, he's he's really the one guy on this team who, you know, despite all the Marlins pitching injuries, he's that one supposedly stable guy, even though he hasn't gotten off to the greatest start this year, that the Marlins have been able to count on the last couple years. And pulling up the stats here in 2023, he pitched 178 innings, K, uh, a K rate through nine, a 10.46. And, I mean, you just you look at these stats and, you know, ERA 3.58 last year. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty good, honestly, for – a guy who, you know, you know, was pitching in Miami and, you know, came over from the A's in that in that uh 
in that big trade for, I believe it was, uh, um, I think he was involved in, uh, with another reliever too, an AJ puck. I can't, I can't think of the name. Uh, who was it for? I don't remember, but, uh, you know, Asus Lazardo, he's a decent left-handed pitcher. He's got great stuff. He can throw upper nineties with that fastball. We saw hit like 97, 98 tonight. So he, you know, he is, he is a polished pitcher and look, he, yeah, he hasn't gotten off to the greatest start, but this Yankee team, they made him work tonight. They really made him work. They were getting to him. They were fouling off a lot of pitches. You know, even those first three, you know, three innings or so where uh, Lazardo was cruising, the Yankees made him work. They made him work. They're fouling off a lot of pitches. They were doing what they've done to start this year. And Nestor Cortez, too, he got off to a quick start. It felt like the innings were going by super quick. He was getting guys one, two, three, and he really needed that today because, uh, you know, his, his previous outings, he – he was getting roughed up a bit. So, uh, you know, take what you want from this game. But uh, the Yankees hit a good pitcher tonight. He hasn't started off the year good. But, you know, th- this guy, this guy, this lefty for the Marlins, Jesus Lazardo, he's, uh, you know, he's no joke. Uh, and But he did walk a lot of guys tonight. He walked five batters. Had four strikeouts, seven earned runs on seven hits. Gave up two home runs to Soto. And uh, Soto and Volpe had a home run apiece off him in that massive fourth inning, six-run fourth inning. But look, I mean, you know, Jesus Lazardo. I mean, he's not some layover pitcher. He's a young guy, 26, like I'm talking about. He's got good stuff. So, and look, he hasn't, you know, his ERA is, you know, well above four to start this year. Oh. Well, after tonight, now it's at 7.20, so that's not good. But, look, I mean, only a couple starts. I think this. I think he's going to turn it around, but Yankees are a tough lineup. So that's a testament to the Yankees lineup. Uh, you know, this was no easy pitcher to face tonight, but the Marlins lineup, my goodness, it's atrocious. Uh, a lot of guys just off to terrible starts. And then the Marlins, to their credit, they've had a lot of injuries, but one in ten, my goodness. Uh, Yankees did what they had to do tonight. Nestor Cortez. He was magnificent. Eight innings pitched, only gave up two hits. That was to one guy named Brian De La Cruz, one of their outfielders, their left fielder, actually. He was the only guy to get on base today for the Marlins. So that just goes show to the testament how Nestor pitched. And those two hits he gave up to De La Cruz, they weren't hit hard. They were like little loopers. One of them was to right field. The other one was the center. So none of these guys were really hitting, hitting balls incredibly hard today off of Nestor. That was a great sign to see. You could see Nestor doing his little – uh, you know, pitch gimme where you go on the mound and slower leg kick and then sidearm delivery. He was doing his funky Nestor stuff that we saw him do in 2022 and just previous years. So that was good to see. And and that he was doing that just to get the timing of the hitter off and everything. But he kind of shot away from that his first uh, two outings this year. And now we see in his third outing, he went back to that and he was really throwing these hitters off. One of them, it was like a sidearm delivery i remember he struck out jake berger on on a high fastball and so his stuff just looked great tonight he was great we needed this from him the bullpen needed a day off so he was able to give us eight innings and then the yankees brought in a rookie josh majuski i think that's how you pronounce he's got a really long last name uh they just called him up today actually added him to the roster he's 28 years old and uh he was able to come in make his major league debut and he did good. He pitched, you know, he pitched, you know, that ninth inning, one, two, three. And uh, it was great for him to see that. And it saved us, you know, from using our bullpen today, which we desperately needed to do. Uh, you know, this bullpen, as I've talked about, you know, in previous episodes, especially yesterday, it's been heavily taxed and they needed the rest day today. And that was huge. And and this, this is where the schedule points in our favor, right? It, it lightens up a bit. Now we have Miami in town and Miami's not, really much of a threat, you know, in, uh, on both sides of the ball, but especially offense. We saw how weak their offense was tonight and really didn't put anything together. So now is the opportunity tonight for Nestor to capitalize and save our bullpen for tonight so we could have it for the rest of the series and then go into Cleveland. And he was able to do that tonight. So props to Nestor because we were talking about Nestor and just starting pitching in general, how we hadn't, hadn't had one guy other than Stroman that had given us six innings. Like we were looking from length from these starting pitchers. We've been talking about it for these first few weeks of the season. And now we finally got it tonight. We saw the old Nestor of 2022, even though it was against a crappy team. So I'm going to 
you know, I'm not going to go I'll go on on a full limb and say after one start, oh yeah, 2022 Nestor's back, but it's a it's a positive sign to at least see in the right direction hopefully for this guy who can be a key contributor, you know, starting pitcher on our staff, you know, especially till Cole comes back and and he was a few years ago and and we saw a lot of those glimpses of Nestor that we saw a few years ago tonight which was positive, you know, in terms of, you know, taking taking these key things moving forward uh throughout the season and you know, hopefully he stays healthy and that elbow holds up. And, and that's really what's crucial. He had six strikeouts. He was great. He was moving the ball all over the zone. Timing was completely off with these Marlin hitters. They couldn't get anything going off of him. Like I said, two base runners tonight. And they were both from that one guy, Dale Cruz, their left fielder. So, you know, and the Marlins, you know, they got a couple guys in that lineup who are supposed to hit and they're not hitting, like Josh Bell, the DH, uh, Jake Berger, the first baseman. Uh, Brian Anderson, the shortstop, and then Luis Arise. I mean, we saw what he did last year with the batting title, hitting over 300. I mean, he's gotten off to a relatively slow start. Uh, he's hitting 250, and that that's pretty low for him considering, you know, he hit uh, in, in the high threes last year. So, you know, the Yankees did what they had to do tonight. And then we look at the Yankees lineup, and Juan Soto, I mean, he was getting on base like crazy. He had the home run, but then he had, you know, he had another hit uh, down the line to left field for a double and it was off Jesus Lozardo, you know, lefty lefty matchup, which was super impressive. I mean, because Lozardo, he was really attacking the zone. He was attacking the Yankee hitters early on. And, you know, Soto was down in the count. He was able to stay in the at bat. This guy never gives up an at bat. If there's one thing you got to know about Juan Soto, it's he never gives up an at bat. So he stayed in that bat and then he was able to waste a pitch down the line. And a key thing that Michael K pointed out that, I'm pretty sure I've covered too is, you know, Yankee stadium. Yes. He does have that short porch and he utilized that tonight, which is crucial. But Juan Soto is the same hitter that he's always been when he was with the Padres last year. And then he was with the nationals. He's, he's the same hitter he's always been. And that's been a guy where he goes where the pitch is. He goes line to line. We saw him do that in Houston when he had that huge ninth inning base hit to break the tie and and give the Yankees the lead. And that's what we saw glimpses of tonight. He's a guy that goes line to line. He goes with the pitch. He takes his walks. He makes the pitcher work, fouls off pitches, doesn't strike out a lot. That's who Juan Soto is. Oh, yeah, and, he, and he's going to probably hit you around 30 homers, too, in a given year. So that's who he is. Juan Soto was in his walk. He knows what's at stake for him in terms of a contract. You know, as I previously previously said, Scott Boris is his client, so – you know, he, he's in his walk here, and, and, and he's really proven himself right now. Not not that he ever needed to, but he's really, you know, showing out. Batting average at 357 now, two for three today. Drove in a run with that home run, a walk. Did have a strikeout, but, you know, it was it was borderline. It wasn't, uh, you know, or actually, no, he did swing and miss, but it, it was it was a, it was a really good pitcher's pitch. I mean, you're going to you're going to have instances, obviously, where that happened. Uh, you know, and, and the pitcher beats you, and that, and that happened and won a bat tonight. But he put every at-bat he works for. He may he may not get on base, but he, he works relentlessly for every at-bat, makes the pitcher work for every pitch. And if if they're going to get him out, they got to really earn it. So that's what really happened tonight. And then we got to talk about Anthony Volpe. I mean, this kid is on fire. And, oh, yeah, to point out, by the way, he t- made two amazing defensive plays in the hole at shortstop. I mean, this kid has – you could tell has really worked coming into the season. He looks like he looks a bit bigger. He's put on some muscle and clearly the defense looks much improved. He did have that throwing error uh, a few days ago, which sucked, but look, in terms of the fielding, I'm talking just defensively fielding at his position. He looks amazing there. And the bat, I mean, he's hitting four, you know, batting average at 417 right now. He was one for three today, three RBIs, did have a walk. And, look, he, he struck out twice, two strikeouts tonight, but they were both on BS calls, uh, strike three calls that he got that were not strikes. Uh, so those two strikeouts, I don't even want to pay attention to that because that wasn't on him. It was on the umpire. And we also saw Alex Verdugo really break through tonight and have a better night. He was three for three. Had a double, an RBI single. I mean, he was great. I mean, and that's hopefully Doogie can heat up. You know, average now at 211. I mean, we need him to 
start picking it up. He can be a key contributor to this lineup. Maybe eventually hit leadoff at some point if, uh, you know, he continues to heat up because that's kind of the guy he profiles as a little bit. I know the Yankees like DJ LeMayu hitting leadoff, but DJ's still out. We don't know the timetable exactly when DJ is going to get back. So, you know, keep an eye out for Dugo. Maybe, you know, he can continue to heat up maybe a little bit uh, and start, you know, pulling some of these better games together like he did tonight. And, uh, yeah, and then also, yeah, John Carl Stan, two for four tonight, ripped two balls past the third baseman. Uh, one to the left side, that third baseman had no time to react on his on his left side, and then the other one down the line, and they were just smoked. Uh, you know, he's he's been a guy that is really heating it up. Average now up at 250. It was It was at 150 less than a week ago. So that's just the whole point is that these guys, it's still really early in the season that the, that any guy really can just turn around like that and get on a hot streak. You know, that's baseball. And, uh, you know, you look up and down this lineup, there's a lot of guys who are starting to pick it up a bit. Aaron Judge, who was 0 for 4 today, he, you know, he's been the one guy that's been slumping a little bit more as of late. But I'm not worried about that because th this is the whole point. Of, ha of going out and getting Juan Soto and Verdugo. And then, you know, you have Volpe further progressing and developing as a player. Th this is the whole point because, it, sure, maybe at, at one point in the season, you're going to have a whole, if you're lucky, like most guys, if not all of them, firing maybe on all cylinders. But nine times out of ten, that's not happening. I mean, you're going to have, you know, one through nine in this lineup, you're going to have probably a couple guys that, are a bit off, you know, and so then the other guys in the lineup have to pick up the slack a little bit, like Volpe has done and Soto has done and Stan has done of late and even Rizzo. But that's okay because that's what good teams have. They have depth. They have a lot of guys in that lineup that can mash and can hit. And last year the Yankees didn't have that. All they had that all they had was judge hitting, you know, because Rizzo was hurt. Volpe was a rookie. He was developing the highs and lows. So it was just on Judge last year, and now we don't have that. So it's okay that Judge can throw go through a little bit of this slump because we got other guys in the lineup that can really hit, and they're hitting right now, and they're picking it up. And that's the whole point of having depth and having balance in your lineup, especially with the righty and lefty switch offs, you know. So that's the key point. You know, so hopefully Judge does get it going soon. Average now dipped a little bit to 175. OPS a little bit down from what we want it to be at 708. But look, I mean, it's still very early. Very, very, very early. The Yankees are now nine and two. Great start. And uh, you know, I believe that is the best record in the MLB right now. I don't know if I don't know if uh they are still tied with the Pirates. No, yeah, so it's best record in MLB right now because the Pirates apparently still 8-2. and two. I guess they didn't play today or maybe they play later. So the Yankees have the best record in baseball as we currently stand at 9-2. and two. So, look, I mean, this team has been super impressive and it's early. And, uh, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this team and just the yeah, at-bats and them being able to work counts and work – pitchers and and even good ones too i mean they faced you know gosman a few days ago and then tonight they're facing jesus lazardo and look yeah the marlins are a crap team they're one in ten uh they obviously should have won tonight and i expect them to win these next two games against them but jesus lazardo isn't you know any way over pitcher he's a good pitcher and he was he was one of the leaders on that staff last year for the Marlins and, uh, you know, young lefty, he's got good stuff, great fastball, good slider change up. I mean, so he, he looked, he looked settled in those first few innings. Like we've seen from a lot of these pitchers facing the Yankees, but then the Yankees chip away, chip away, chip away. They work, they fight at bats and then they get that pitch. They get that mistake and they capitalize and it starts there. It starts there. And it's, and it, and it started because, you know, the first – those first few innings, the Yankees couldn't get a hit. They couldn't get a hit. Lozardo was overmatching our hitters, but then we chipped away. We chipped away, 
And that's what good teams do. You know, uh, Juan Soto had that double with two outs in the third. Couldn't bring him in, but that was the start. Team was chipping away. Then we go to the fourth inning, get some runners on, some hits. Volpe with the huge three-run homer. Then continue a further rally. We get Dewey on, those other guys. And then Soto capitalizes and hits a three-run homer himself. All in the same inning, six runs, just like that. And then Nestor doing what he does. He shuts it down with a six-run lead. Yankees add one in the fifth, in that next inning. And then Nestor's just rolling, man. He was just rolling. And he was rolling right out of the gate, too. The Yankees, Yankees you know, didn't have to get him really any run support early on because he was rolling. He was putting up zeros all night long. The, we, we saw the Nestor tonight that that we saw pretty much all of 2022. So, yeah, it, it was a terrible team. The Marlins aren't good. But in terms of Nestor's confidence and his ability – and overall health, too, and durability. This is what you wanted to see tonight. Good or bad team, I don't care. Uh, you know, and that's that's a step in the right direction. Hopefully he can continue to build on that in his next start, and, and we'll see how it goes from there. But, I mean, just a lot of improvement. And, and Anthony Volpe, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I probably already said this, but he came into camp, put on some weight, put on some muscle, and, and you could just see the levelness in his swing. I mean, last year it was very loopy, uppercut, trying to hit home runs. And, and I said last year, you know, th- this was before I started this podcast, but I was just saying, and, and you know, a lot of people were, had the same sentiment. You know, he's got to, you know, shorn up that swing because he can be a great player because he has the tools, the physical tools in terms of, you know, having a lot of speed on the bases, being able to steal bags. He has some pop, has some contact ability to hit the ball all over the field, which is glimpses of what he saw from him last year, even though the batting average and, 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 and the stat sheet wasn't pretty, but we saw those intangible things that he had. And, and he had glimpses of dominance despite the up and ups and downs. And, and look, it was his rookie year. And, and, you know, coming into this year, we were hoping he could flatten the bat path a little bit, get on base more, you know, be a guy that doesn't have to be the power guy you know, that's why you got Soto, Judge, Stanton, Rizzo. I mean, those are the big boppers. Your your ideal projection is that Volpe would be the future leadoff hitter of this team for the next 10 years and play shortstop, hold down that position, and be the table setter. And right now, you know, being towards the bottom of the order in the seven or eight hole, I mean, he's he's been that guy. He's been that guy. So it's only a matter of time until they put Volpe in the leadoff spot because that's who he's been to start this year. And I know it's a small sample size, 10, you know, 10 11, or now 11 games. I know, I know it's small, but this is what you want to see. This is, this is who the Yankees have held on to and refused to trade for years because this is who they believe in Anthony Volpe being. And right now he's been that. If we're being completely honest, he has been that. He's been red hot to start this year. And even as at bats, I mean, there's a crazy stat out there uh, when he was, I don't know what it is now, but when it was, when it was leaving Arizona and heading into Toronto, I think they showed like, like over 50, 60 pitches or something that he saw. And he only swung and missed at like four or five of them. I mean, and he was taking a ton of pitches to work in deep counts, which he also did tonight. I mean, this whole mindset, this whole mantra of working the count, grinding at bats, fouling off pitches that Juan Soto does, it is literally trickled down this whole lineup to start the year. And I also want to make a comparison to, and look, I'm not saying that this is who the Yankees are going to be. It's incredibly early. We know this team's playoff history of the bats going cold and, the pitching not, you know, being there at full depth come playoffs. We, we know all this, you know, great regular seasons within the last decade. And then the playoffs are, they just, they just don't show up. Look, we're, we're all used to that at this point, but all I'm going to say is that the New York Yankees so far this year, 
their at bats. They have the highest batting average right now in the league. And they're also have guys on this team, such as Gleyber Torres and Volpe, who are seeing the most pitches in this league and Juan Soto. And a team that did that, the last Yankee team that did that was the 98 Yankees. They, they were notoriously known for working the pitcher, working the count, getting on base. I mean, that was Gene Michael's philosophy. I, I was listening to the Yes broadcast, broadcast crew the other day, and they were saying Gene Michael, before Moneyball, Ever came out with, with Billy Bean and all that and the sabermetrics and, and valuing the underlying statistics of on-base percentage and whatnot, they were saying that Gene Michael said in the early 90s, we have way too many guys in this lineup who are getting out on two, three, or four pitches. We need guys in this lineup who can work counts, work at bats, and get on base. We need a load of that in the lineup. That's what Gene Michael was saying to the Yankees development team, scouting department, front office. I mean, he was the GM for, for a lot of those years and in, in the 90s, and, and that was his philosophy, building up the team that he built. Brian Cashman didn't build that team. Sorry. Brian Cashman may have been assistant GM. He was a part of it, but Gene Michael was at the helm of that dynasty Yankee team in the 90s that, you know, then was eventually taken over by Cashman and then heading into the early 2000s. But Gene Michael built that team, and it was on that philosophy that we need guys who can grind at bats, you know, have seven, eight pitch at bats, walk, get on base, do whatever they can, and drive runners in. That was the philosophy because guys were getting out way too early. The pitchers were putting them down on, on pitch one, two, three, or four. And that was not acceptable. And that was something that we saw from this team constantly last year. Constantly. IKF or somebody would come up and it was like two pitches, oh, out. Or, or you know, three guys would come up and the pitcher would only have to throw like six or seven pitches. Boom, 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 boom. Quick outs. This team hasn't done that so far to start this year. So, yes, it's early, but these are the kind of approaches to hitting as a team collectively and producing and not only putting up runs, but strategizing and making these pitchers work and then getting to the bullpen. Look, we saw this team when they were coming up with Judge and then they traded for Stanton and they had Gary Sanchez, that, that last young core that failed, right? Outside of Aaron Judge, they they were pretty much all bust, right? Greg Bird, Gary Sanchez, you know, those guys came up, and and that's why the Yankees for several years, from like 2017 to 2019, were leading the league in home runs. They were hitting over 200 home, <clears throat> sorry, over like 200 homers a year. Glaber Torres is a part of that group too. Like these, the, the team was known for hitting home runs, and it's not. Totally like that this year. We've seen the team manufacture runs, not having to solely rely on the long ball. We've seen that from Juan Soto, Glaber Torres, Volpe, Verdugo, Rizzo. Yeah, sure, they have their home runs. But honestly, do you remember this team, aside from the start of this year, being able to man manufacture runs without having to hit home runs? And I'm talking within like the last decade. No, the answer is no. So that's what it's been for this team right now. They've gone back to that old approach that the 90s dynasty Yankees had in early 2000s. Bernie, Cheater, Posada, Tino Martinez, Brocious. Now, now, granted, they weren't all, you know, you had Cheater and and Bernie, you know, he had the core four, but not all those guys were stars. I mean, you had you had guys on those teams that, you know, weren't the biggest and bright stars, but they played their asses off, and they, they grinded at bats. I mean, like Daryl Strawberry, Scott Brocious. I mean, you could go on and on and on. I'm still reading my, my 98 Yankees book, by the way. Uh, you know, I, I, got, I actually got to finish that. 
1998 Yankees. Uh, but that's that's the philosophy. And look, I've I've said this all the time too. Like that's the recipe. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but that's the recipe to win a title. You need a team that doesn't have to solely rely on home runs because pitchers are going to expand upon that that aggressiveness and get more strikeouts. And that's exactly what has happened to this team in previous years in the postseason and regular season. So I love this approach. Hopefully they can keep it up. And it's been fun to watch because you like watching these at bats because it just makes it more interesting. It makes it more fun. You know, home runs are great too, but I love seeing balls hitting the gap as well. Guys running, stealing bases, getting aggressive, getting dirty. I love that, man. It's fun to watch. You know, sure, home runs are fun, but I, I remember when this team, all they were known for was the home run. It was like, you know, it was, it was literally home run or strikeout. And sure, you do have guys in this lineup where it does really seem like home run or strikeout, such as like, you know, John Carl Stan. But, you know, he put a couple hits together today, weren't weren't home runs. And, and look, I mean, you're going to have guys in a lineup who are home run or strikeout usually. And, and that's that's every team, right? You have your big boppers that are like that, but collectively you, you want to build around guys who can, like Soto or Volpe, grind at bats and get their walks, but also hit the ball all over the field and not have to solely rely on, I got to hit a home run every AB type of approach because it just doesn't work, I don't think. I think the game has evolved too much you know, into that. And, and now I think it's starting to shift away from that because I think teams are realizing, you know, look, pitching tightens up in the playoffs, right? You Regular season, you're facing a lot of mid or crappy teams, you know, where they have pitchers who are constantly missing their spots. But in the playoffs, obviously, every team is pretty dang good. So they're putting their best of the best out there in the league and on their team. And those guys don't miss much. So you have to be able to have great plate discipline, a good eye at the plate, work counts like you, you need those tools those are crucial tools to hitting and hitting well in professional baseball and in the big leagues and this team has done that so far in these first 11 games so you know that's hopefully they can you know we can keep that approach up and it's not always going to work out i mean we've had games where we've been shut out but overall the at bats Work in the count. How how many pitches? You got to look at how many pitches that the opposing pitcher has thrown those first three innings. Those first three innings, or four innings, whatever, those those first few innings, right? If that pitcher is over 40, 50 pitches, you know you're doing your job. You know, you know you're making that pitcher work. A lot of times the Yankees after the second inning, the pitcher's already like almost at 60 pitches or by the third inning approaching 70. That's how you know you're doing your job. You're making the pitcher work, and then you want to get to that bullpen. You want to do the same exact freaking thing. So, sure, the results aren't always going to work. You know, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna work at bats, and sometimes the pitcher's going to win. It's a chess game. It's literally a chess game. Sometimes the pitcher's going to win. Sometimes the batter's going to win. But the whole point is to just wear them down. And that's what the old Yankees did. That's what the Yankees of this year have done so far. So that's the main takeaway from tonight and every game practically so far to start this year. You know, and hopefully tomorrow, you know, we just we just have that same approach every day. You chip away, you chip away, you chip away. And you know, before we know it, too, hopefully then Garrett Cole's back. Hopefully then we're at, we're by that June 1st target date and Garrett Cole is back pitching for the New York Yankees. Tomorrow the Yankees face A.J. Puck, the tall left-hander for the Marlins. He's 0-2, nine-year array, six strikeouts. Yeah, obviously not a good start, but, uh, he, you know, he throws hard. He's got some control issues, so the Yankees – should be able to work the count on him. And the Yankees have another southpaw of their own going, Carlos Rodon. 
He's 0-0 on the season so far, 2.79 year array, seven strikeouts. He was much improved last outing in Arizona. I believe he had four strikeouts. Gave up a couple home runs, but he kept the team in the game. The velocity looked good. So hopefully he can build on that. He's going to be facing a lesser team tomorrow, a team that's really been struggling offensively. So this is a time for him, like Nestor did tonight, to really show a, a, a leap and bounds moment of, of growth and being able to strive forward and and improve and give us some length tomorrow. That would be ideal. If Carlos Rodon could give us six, seven innings tomorrow, man, I would be thrilled. I don't care that it's the Miami Marlins. Yes, they stink. But Nestor and Rodon were shaky to start this year. Yes, they did keep the, t- the team in the game. I've read that online and stuff. But their first outings were shaky, okay? You can't say they were good outings when you're giving up three, four, five runs and, and you know, working a lot of deep counts and, and walks are an issue and, and guys are hitting you around a little bit. You can't say that was a great outing. So, Carlos Rodon. We need the velocity to be there tomorrow, and we need him to work more efficiently like like uh, sorry, Cortez did tonight. That would be a huge boost in confidence moving forward. And then Marcus Stroman will get the ball in the third game on Wednesday. So, you know, I, I, have, I have faith in the pitchers. Not the greatest confidence just because part of me, I'm, I'm still worried with Cole out. And the depth is thin, but we've gotten by so far pretty well, honestly. It's astonishing how we have the record that we have and Garrett Cole's out right now. It's astonishing that we're 9-2 and two and Garrett Cole has not pitched a game yet this year. That's just wild to me. Uh, but look, I mean, baseball... You know, you have things on paper, but you also have things that are unpredictable. And, and this was unpredictable that the Yankees would start off this way without Cole. And hopefully we can we can keep him moving. Hopefully Rodon can put up a solid outing tomorrow following in Cortez's footpaths. And then we got Stroman, who's been dealing his first two outings, to wrap up the series on Wednesday. So the main takeaways from today, if if, you know, to summarize, I would say, is that the offense – has continued with the same approach and has paid dividends. They're not relying on the home run ball. They're working counts while it's total epic. And that approach has trickled down the entire lineup in terms of the at-bats, taking pitches, working counts, getting into deep counts, fouling off pitches, doing damage when you need to. And that's, that's it. I mean, in the pitching – the bullpen got a nice rest day today that they desperately needed, like we were saying. And now tomorrow, you know, that bullpen, we, we, we can use it a little bit if we need to. Tomorrow when bats wake up a bit, which I think they will at some point. Uh, and it's just astonishing that the Marlins have gotten off to the start. Yes, they have had a lot of injuries. They've had a ton of injuries to their starting rotation. So that's that's been the brunt of it of why they have really struggled massively out of the gate to start the year. But they got some guys in that lineup that have also gone off to slow starts, specifically Luis Arise and others. And so I, I I expect them to pick it up at some point. So that's something, you know, I, I think is going to happen. Whether it happens in this series or not, I don't know. But that's something that isn't out of the question. I, I, don't, I don't think the Marlins are going to be like Oakland A's bad. This year, I, I really don't think that. I think just the injury bug and having such a horrendous start, I, I think that's that's some of the main causes for it. And look, then their lineup hasn't really hit, but they got guys in that lineup that can that can match a little bit. You know, are they are they a playoff team? No, but do I see them being this bad the whole year, winning losing over a hundred games? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. You know, we'll see, but that's not what I think is going to happen, I don't think. So we have to be prepared. I think, you know, they got some guys in that lineup that can that can hit. They've gotten off slow starts. So if we need to stretch the bullpen a little bit tomorrow, I think we can, given given we have this nice little rest day. Hopefully not. I, I would love if Rodon could repeat at somewhat close to at least 
of what Cortez did tonight, that would be great. Give the bullpen some more rest. And then Friday you give Stroman the ball and you say, let's go. That's it. So, all right. I mean, that's all I got for you guys. Yankees had nine hits tonight, by the way. You said the Marlins only had two from one guy. Yankees had nine. So, they really came out tonight. And the pitching was a quick game, too. Paul O'Neill, Michael K, and the S crew were pointing that out. Like, you know, this game started at a little after six. was over before 8.30, a little over two hours with that pitch clock. And then the other games, right, like the Toronto series, you were seeing games well over three hours because both sides just couldn't get out. The yeah, at-bats were long. I mean, the Blue Jays and Yankees were just both pitchers on – on those teams coming in, had trouble throwing strikes and attacking the zone. And we didn't see that today from the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees attacked the zone. Nestor Cortez went right after guys. He wasn't getting into too many deep counts. And that's what you like to say. So that really wraps it up today for the Yankees on deck podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you soon. Let's go Yankees.